Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights, where we invite leading minds and game changers with incomparable experience and unique knowledge to come on our light-hearted yet informative show. My fellow co-host, philanthropist Patrick Zhang, seasoned business maverick Herman Hu, and myself aim to help business leaders, investors, and the wider community gain insights, grasp opportunities, and see behind and beyond glaring spotlights. My name is Nick Chen, a lawyer and lawmaker, and your host for this special bonus episode, which marks the completion of season two of our program. Today, let us together celebrate the shared success of this beautiful international city, the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, with first-hand knowledge and stories of grit, passion and compassion, overcoming tribulations with fiercely strong Lion Rock spirit from leaders and game changers who graced us. Let's now take an introspective look at some past episodes so we can together unwind, reset and reflect on the present and plan to fast forward for a greater shared future. Hong Kong is a very useful uh, base for foreign enterprises, big and small, uh, to break into the uh, GBA market in, um, in Guangdong province, which has a, a, a rising and pretty high uh, buying power. Uh, average income level in these nine cities on the mainland uh, are, are actually quite high. So there's been very heavy uh, public and private investments in infrastructure in the entire uh, GBA uh, region. For example, the uh, uh, high-speed train service between Hong Kong and these uh, cities. I mean, you're talking about half an hour, an hour uh, coverage of uh, most of these uh, cities in the uh, uh, Guangdong province of uh, the GBA, um, and also uh, roads, tunnels, and airports, etc. Et and, and, and so, uh, seriously, when one could cover most of these cities on a daily commute basis, uh, either driving or uh, riding on the uh, high-speed train. This is where East meets West, and um, in terms of law and order, uh, according to the uh, World Justice Project, uh, we rank number 16 in the world. And uh, in terms of uh, freedom in the way uh, we live and the way we conduct our business, uh, the Fraser Institute has ranked us for over 10 years as the freest economy in the world. And uh, particularly, uh, they think our regulatory system uh, and the sort of uh, regulation in terms of uh, free trade uh, is top of the world. The world is much closer connected and we, we always look for bilateral or multilateral cooperation between countries and regions and Hong Kong will serve as a very good hub for that. And I think we can continue to play that role uh, because China is determined to open up, you mm. know, it's sort of announced, you know, by 2050, we are going to do this, that, and the other. Mm. And uh, strangely enough, they, you know, keep to their plans. Mm. Mm. So I think Hong Kong will have the great future, it's just playing our traditional role, but do it in a modern way. There are so many, ex you know, opportunities now uh, uh, available in China. So how should we use Hong Kong to enter the GPA markets? Hong Kong, in the history of Hong Kong, has always add value to China at a different time, mm. right? Now, of course, China have morph itself, right, you know, from, you know, I would say very poor country mm -hmm. to now the second largest economy in the world. Mm. Now, their needs are different. So how, how could Hong Kong play that role mm. to serve China? It's going to be different from what we used to serve. Mm. But for in order to, stay home, to keep Hong Kong relevant, we need to always stay ahead and make sure that value is added to China and to the, to the investor as well. We have three, four hundred million the rising middle class. Mm. That middle class, that's, that's, that's bigger than even than the country of the United States. So you can imagine the needs are very diverse. So for a lot of um, uh, mainland manufacturers or Hong Kong manufacturers, uh, many of them has been looking into uh, domestic selling in, in mainland many years ago. And while we were enjoying our, our foreign business, for a long, long time. But so is it the other way around now in, in, in mainland uh, with uh, many mainland manufacturers and they have been enjoying a lot of uh, businesses mostly uh, done domestically. So it's, it's, it's always nice to have a balance. What uh, businesses look for is uh, stability mm. uh, and they look for uh, a place where they can do their business without uh, fear, without uh, danger, uh, without violence. Uh, and of course, they were highly scared during the 
protest movement of uh, 2019, 2020, which turned extremely violent uh, and made life extremely difficult for all types of business people. Uh, and so once the national security law was enacted in June uh, 2020, uh, things were able to start returning to normal. Uh, people felt safe again. Businesses could resume their normal activities. Uh, and so this was uh, exactly what was required to provide the economic stability that the business world wants. And of course, this is why the, the new law was welcomed by, for example, the banks, by the, uh, the hotel chains, uh, by the businesses, and so on. We have a, a stable legal environment. Uh, we have an independent judiciary. We have a strong uh, uh, legal profession. Uh, so all the essentials are there mm. uh, for a sound future. Mm. And I see no reason why the present system should not be extended beyond 2047. Uh, which I think uh, would be reassuring to most people in Hong Kong and indeed to many businesses as well. But now that One Country, Two Systems is back on track, mm. then I am hopeful that uh, the, uh, the view will be taken ultimately that uh, the present system, uh, by and large, uh, should be continued after 2047 uh, because it will be the interests of not only the people of Hong Kong but also of, of the, the rest of China. It is my mandate to be able to work with China to develop research and actually to develop cancer care. And I think that is exactly what the entrepreneur spirit is about, is uncertainty bring you to a land of so-called unforeseeable future. The first question I'm being asked is that, what is a scalability? Now, being restricted to Hong Kong, of course, is a very limited scalability. But once you go into the greater area, uh, immediately we can apply a much bigger scalability into entrepreneurship. If I had to say one thing, it's a very safe place to bring up a family, great schooling, um, a lot of opportunity. It's a place that you don't have to worry about anyone carrying guns or all the violence that's going on around the world. Hong Kong people are very, very nice. So it's a great place to do business and bring up a family. And we've got a great harbor. We've got great islands, great hiking, great trails. To me, it's one of the best places in the world. So anyone who is thinking about coming out or thinking about their future, just hop on a plane like I did and come out here. In the past, everyone here in, in, in the East used to the West, send my kids to school in the West, uh, I, you know, do business in the West and all that. In the future, it's the reverse. my advice to young people, mm. the reverse. Young people in the West, look east. In terms of Hong Kong, um, I think people underappreciate how great Hong Kong really is as a place of doing business, right? Uh, especially in times like this where there's a lot more uh, international spat. But Hong Kong is, a, is, a, is a part of China, uh, yet it is really an open uh, capitalist system where there is a distinct role uh, where capital can flow freely. So a lot of um, uh, venture capital or private equity uh, folks actually um, uh, have operations here. So our conversations, a lot of our investors are actually Hong Kong based. Of course, there's some are international based, but with Hong Kong operations, right? But it's such a fantastic place as a gateway to uh, what we see internationally. I think there are many things to say that's unique about Hong Kong in that sense, mm. but it is a city that has always been open to art, uh, to art but also ideas and the movement of of things and it's a, it's a trading hub mm. and that sits as part of the art and culture space. We have an incredible market that's already well, estab well is establishing itself mm. and an um, incredible collector base as well. I think also we are a fulcrum where so many people come and go in and out of uh, Hong Kong and I think that location of Hong Kong, you know, where it sits geographically is also really interesting. It's part of the Greater Bay. It's an amazing crucible for so much to happen. Our court system is very well established and the judicial independence is guaranteed. And Hong Kong is uh, one of the leading arbitration centers in the world. Arbitration has one added benefit, and that is the enforceability of the um, arbitral award around the world under New York Convention. Mediation, there is also a convention that deals with that. Arbitrability of IP disputes is not an issue. People can resolve their dis IP disputes on arbitration. I've done that many times. We have an organization called the Hong Kong Research Institute for Textile and Apparel. It's funded by the government, but also closely working with our industries. 
Um, we work into a lot of um, areas of functional garments. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, water repellent, it could be uh, antibacterial, uh, antiviral. Uh, we also built the technology uh, to make garments for athletes. Mm -hmm. So all these things are happening in Hong Kong. Uh, we are not only good at making garments or textile, but we are also a leaders in terms of researching functional fabric. Rice is very um, interesting. It's very much like pairing, uh, like red wine, but nobody actually says how to pair rice. But if I give you the best fragrance rice, and then I ask you to eat sushi with it, you don't like it. Or even eat the eel rice, the unagi, you don't like it. Right? On the, on the, it doesn't match. So on the other hand, if I give you the best Japanese rice, and then you cook in a clay pot in Hong Kong, it doesn't match. So the minute you eat, eat, uh, you eat the rice, you think, ah, it's, it's not like that. So it's like pairing. So you have a special rice, for example, if you eat risotto, you do the Italian rice. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlights. Let's continue with more highlights and Beyond Spotlight stories. We have to ensure that Hong Kong people, their interests and their future are well taken care of. So it's not just that I will be grabbing talents from other places. I'll be developing, nurturing, creating the good environment and learning opportunities and also development opportunities for Hong Kong people. I think that is very important as well. After all, this is the home of Hong Kong people. We do have tailor-made plans for uh, industries or companies that we think has have a long-term strategic value uh, to Hong Kong's overall development. I think we should focus on specific strategic uh, industry because that will ensure that we will have a fast return in a shorter period of time. That will ensure that we will be uh, on par with our uh, competing economies. I think when you talk about one country, two system, I think the, the, the immediately we, we can connect to is the Greater Bay Area. Greater Bay Area immediately extends Hong Kong's reach and population to seven, 70 million people from 7 million. So I can envision the future, we can, Hong Kong can bridge the world mm -hmm. and get more hosting opportunities, uh, different uh, sporting events, conventions, and, and, and what, whatever may be, trade shows even. But we reach out to the Greater Bay Area, even the Greater uh, China market. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a sound business proposal for a lot of the inter international federations, a lot of international mm -hmm. sporting you know, agencies to really put their eye on Hong Kong. Hong Kong's healthcare system is really world class. Uh, we have got an excellent healthcare system, and Bloomberg has classified our healthcare system as the most efficient in the world for several years. And um, apart from our high level of medical care, we also adopt very state of the art technology. So that may be one of the reasons why the life expectancy for the Hong Kong people is the longest in the world. Mm. So in the future, I believe combining with 5G technology, we will be able to deliver more efficient and precision care to our patients in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is anything but a cultural desert. Um, we see Hong Kong bringing up a world-class uh, orchestra, world-class performances in ballet, um, international award-winning art groups. Our uh, performing arts school is uh, one of the best, if not the best in the region, where students from across the region come to study. I've seen uh, recent musicals, for example, um, and uh, these are musical performances put together by the younger generation. They obviously have all the musical influences of the West, but um, its language is Chinese, its dialect is Cantonese, and its um, 
artistical expressions are a, a mixture of West and the East. So obviously, you know, mainland China having masses of market, Greater Bay Area itself is so many times over larger than Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So as a filmmaker, we have to focus on that. But as a Chinese filmmaker, as a Chinese actor, I see still many obstacles for us to overcome being Chinese. Why don't we look at uh, internally, after all, we have the biggest market in the world, right? Why not focus ourselves into our own markets? And the whole Hollywood industry knows my, uh, that if they want Donnie Yen in the film, first of all, they have to be respectful to our Chinese culture. They have to uh, understand uh, our Chinese culture. Not only this is my passion in my, in my career, but also I feel a certain responsibility as a Chinese man to use my platform as a filmmaker, as an actor, uh, to represent our Chinese culture or our Chi as a Chinese person in the best light possible. We are doing a lot to support the uh, training of talent and, and also the support for the uh, talent for who are willing to join the art and cultural industry, uh, such as supports for the graduate from the uh, Hong Kong APA uh, Performing Arts Academy. Yes. And uh, we are also supporting some new uh, performing arts group uh, so that they can stage their performance easier mm. uh, in Hong Kong. And one very important uh, things that we, we have to look at is about the development in the GBA, mm -hmm. uh, the great, uh, Greater Bay Area. Mm. Uh, there are lots of opportunities for the uh, arts performing groups or even for um, individuals uh, to develop their career or to do their performances in, in the uh, cities in the Greater Bay Area. I think the Chinese Medicine Hospital will be a flagship in education. Mm in the Chinese medicine service, and also in the product development. I think that flagship, not just for Hong Kong. I think it can serve for the Big Bay area and also cover the other countries, which is a very unique place Hong Kong can do. Hong Kong can work in closely with mainland China, with the central government, and also working with different the institutes in the world mm -hmm. to promote, to developing those of the Chinese medicine and let it spread in the other countries. We're looking into new you know, uh, sector of uh, business development uh, because after the, the, the big data, the artificial intelligence, we are trying to connect artificial intelligence with the manufacturing, with the service sector and having this mechanical, you know, even robotic science uh, ongoing. So that's why um, for our strategies, we have this research institute. Firstly, it's for commercialization of some um, technologies that in Hong Kong, you know, and to connect it to the market and to place it into the note of the supply, uh, value chain of mm. tech industry. Mm. Um, especially we would focus on bringing this tech to Chinese market. We have to connect it to the Chinese market and uh, converge with uh, China's uh, manufacturing as well as um, tech you know, base. Mm. Only in this way we can uh, uh, how say that, uh, facilitate a successful you know, startup in Hong Kong. Obviously, uh, Hong Kong being a financial, international financial center requires a lot of supporting facilities. Uh, luckily, Hong Kong has a very good airport system of which it can connect Hong Kong to many places around the world. At the same time, we also have facilities like convention centers and excellent telecommunication work in Hong Kong. So when you put all together, truly, Hong Kong is a place for business. Hong Kong is a place for international scene. So henceforth, MTR is playing a role to support Hong Kong being sort of continuing to be the international center of Asia. The current environment we're doing business may be what we are do good at. However, the environment is changing very quickly. New technology can quickly change the world. The message we, we, we send to all our colleagues is to ensure that when, when you are doing your job, don't stop thinking of what can you do better by leveraging on new technology. There are plenty of opportunities doing business in the Greater Bay Area, but mm -hmm. we would encourage 
the enterprises to use Hong Kong as a platform to get into the Greater Bay Area. On the other hand, we would like to um, invite the business from the Greater Bay Area to use Hong Kong as a platform to go international. We have to be um, totally integrated into uh, the country's policy mm. for the economy development, like the Bell and Row Initiative, as mm. well as the 14 five year plan. Mm. So we are in close coordination and discussion with all the relevant parties in mainland for the joint development of the economy of Hong Kong as well. In my view, artificial intelligence is one of the most amazing human technical advance in our human civilization. So it's definitely good. It's definitely not evil. Right. Right. I agree. But of course, any technology can be put in evil use. Mm. But that's 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 a different story. Right. The technology itself is amazing. It's a wonderful achievement. Mm -hmm. So the human mind, the biology, physics, all mixed together. So people call the sometimes called the metaverse. Right. And it's really talking about uh, the information world, right? The, the virtual world and the real world mixed together. So this is the really the future. Where there is a will, there is a way. We can choose to maintain harmony between economic progress and protecting the nature. By developing and deploying good technology, our country China and other nations have worked together and made strides in industrial output economic progress. Lifting 1.1 billion people out of poverty, helping 1.9 billion people have access to safe drinking water, 3.5 billion people gain internet access. That's a big achievement. To quote Chinese presidency's philosophy and approach in building a community of shared future for the human race, clear waters and green mountain are as valuable as gold and silver mountains. This is what is otherwise well known as a two mountains theory. We must leave the world a better place for future generations than we found it. Hong Kong is already the Asia's leading international financial center, and that put us in an excellent position to be the fintech hub of Asia Pacific region as well. The reason is for the fintech companies, um, as they develop, they would be looking for access to investors, they will be looking for access to potential customers, and they will be looking for access to potential business partners. Uh, and in Hong Kong, you will see that most of the multinational financial institutions set up either the Asia Asia region headquarters in Hong Kong, or the biggest presence in Asia in Hong Kong as well. So it gave them tremendous access to such potential investors, potential business partners, and potential customers. Uh, indeed, we see that a lot of fintech companies in, let's say, mainland China, would set up business in Hong Kong and use Hong Kong to attract foreign investment, and also use Hong Kong as a springboard to develop the business overseas. Thank you, Joseph. We'll be right back after the break. In this segment, Beyond Spotlight's story, we ask our guests to highlight an item or an episode in their life that has special meaning to them. My family gave me a one-way ticket to England, which was uh, expensive, and then uh, paid uh, my uh, tuition fees, and then gave me uh, one year's worth of uh, living expenses. And then I, I decided to uh, do some part-time uh, work so that I don't have to rely entirely on my uh, family going forward. I, I was introduced to this um, Chinese fish and chip and takeaway shop and I worked uh, behind the counter uh, for six hours an evening on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays and I was paid uh, £3.50 um, a night. So I made uh, £10.50 uh, for working three nights a week. Life was a bit uh, challenging. I started off as a, as a civil engineer and um, uh, I had the opportunity to take up um, law um, whilst I was working on a construction site in the morning. So it was, it was hard work, but as everything it should be, there is some hard work that you have to put into. I thought I would give it a try and moved on to the legal practice. 
Now, the engineering practice is even more male-dominated in those mm. days. Mm. Uh, the, even the legal profession, the barristers, was also fairly and still quite uh, male-dominated. Mm. If there are people who think that uh, because you're a female and therefore you are not that good, you, you'll be easily able to prove that they are so wrong. Uh, during college, I was very sick. So I spent uh, pretty much every other semester in the hospital, mm. you know, um, for all sorts of operations. So I had three bypass operations and a number of other procedures anyway. So, so while doing my absence from, from school, mm. um, I, uh, I thought I can still manage to uh, you know, catch up with some credit and maybe graduate on time. So I was mm. looking through the syllabus and trying to find something that I can study while recuperating uh, offshore. You know, away from school. I, I was in, I was in college in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and came art. So I thought, oh, I can do that too. And I changed my major to studio art. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I already had the taste of money. <laughs> I was earning more money when I was working than my teachers at the time. I was the only kid when I was 16 years old. Had his own s car. You know, had a convertible. <laughs> but that was something that really. Uh, built my character, I think. And uh, so basically, uh, what, uh, when I was 16, I was looking for a job. And uh, there was a lingerie company, ladies lingerie company, looking for a, uh, a shipping clerk. I had no idea what shipping clerk was all about. But lingerie sounded very exciting to a 16-year-old. So by accident, I wound up being in the uh, garment business, in the fashion industry. I'm sure you have heard of uh, the connected scale, IOT scales, yes, yes. that measures your, your weight, your body fat, and uh, uh, keep track of, of these uh, numbers on your uh, uh, IOT or Android devices. But imagine uh, the similar device was developed 21 years ago. Wow. Okay, uh, so we didn't have uh, 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 iOS or Android, mm. a PDA. Mm. Uh, actually, it's a, a, it's a palm brace uh, PDA. Uh, oh. It's the same. And uh, transfer the, the scout data via uh, the uh, infrared device uh, to the unit here. It's a little matchbox toy car that belonged to my little son. And he was four years old when he gave this to me over 25 years ago. <laughs> It was his most precious thing that he gave. It came so naturally for him. And I think about that hospitality in, um, in many things that I do. And I, and I hope to be able to always remember that gesture. That's a life lesson for me that he, as a little child, taught me. So um, uh, I brought a notebook, which is my first notebook from the first day I, I worked. Because this, to me, is my philosophy of learning and continuous learning and curiosity and diligence at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's just about exercising the mind and the brain together so that you keep on learning. So this represents learning. Every single day, there are notes. Every single day. Even if, there's no, if there are no meetings, there are notes that I write for myself about what are the uh, uh, learning gaps I have, what are things I have to learn. So I have learning goals. Oh for myself. I give myself feedback a lot, right, even with these notebooks. And the item is quite obvious. It's a 75-year-old typewriter that belonged to my father. And this is first typewriter that uh, he owned. Maybe I can start the story uh, when he was a child. I mean, he was 11 years old when his father passed away. And that's actually during the Japanese war. So he and his friend sell kerosene. Uh, you know, to, at that time, there's no so-called electricity or stuff like that. They are actually quite relatively innovative. They actually use the uh, diesel and distill it into kerosene. And they build their own device. And then I'm surprised they did not explode and kill every one of them. But they did it, and they survived the war just that way. Well, I brought along today a very precious item, uh, which is a watch given to me by my mum when I left for England to study law in 1966. Yeah. There. And, um, and I was leaving for mm. Kai Tech Airport, and she didn't really want me to go. I was the youngest daughter. Mm. And she said, are you really going? I said, mum, yes. She said, I'm, I'm really going. And when I come back, I will be a barrister. <laughs> anyway, I kept the watch. I kept my promise. My mum left us uh, in 2012, mm. nearly 10 years now. Mm. And uh, from then onwards, she's with me all the time. Where I am, she is. 
the uh, Attorney General of Hong Kong wasn't happy with the, uh, with the decision of the Court of Appeal. So the Attorney General appealed to the, the Privy Council in London. Mm. So I was asked to go across and do the case uh, against a London Queen's Council. Uh, and uh, as it was my first case, my father got extremely excited about <laughs> it, probably more excited than me. So I did the case, I remember, in, uh, at, the, at the end of 1988, uh, and then we had to wait a, a month or so until we got the result. Did you win? We won the case. Well yes, done. yes. I was very, 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 very chuffed with that, but uh, not as happy as my father. He was more excited than me. For myself, uh, family is very important. And to mm -hmm. a certain extent, my family, uh, especially my wife, has shaped who I am today. We've been together for many years. So I brought something very special. Uh, as she's an athlete, I brought her gold medals from the Olympics uh -huh. from 2008. Why I brought it here today is not about the medals themselves. These medals, I think we should see a deeper story. Mm -hmm. I think it's also responsible for society and people to understand the Lion Rock spirit behind getting these medals. When I had a chance to study medicine, I, I was choosing between the very well-established medical school in Hong Kong U mm -hmm. versus the brand new medical school in CHK. Mm. Most people would go for the well-established medical school because you couldn't lose. Mm. But in those days, I surprisingly made a very brave decision to choose to study in that brand new medical school in CHK. Mm. Why? Because I don't believe in this starting line. I don't believe PATH is well-established for those people who dare to dream. Mm. And therefore, I chose to study medicine in CHK. When I reached uh, the age of three, then my, fi my family finally uh, were able to afford to rent our own place. Mm. When I was small, I told my parents that actually I like music, I, I always sang in, uh, at home, and I want to learn piano. But definitely, uh, they could not afford that, uh, buying a piano or paying a tuition fee. So I only asked for a couple of times, I realized that my family could not afford it and they didn't ask anymore. But then when I reached age 10, uh, when my parents finally could afford our own place, then uh, when I got into my bedroom, then I found a piano in my bedroom. So I was very touched and I was very surprised. Very sweet. So I finally started to um, learn piano at the age of 10. So when I actually uh, graduated from the middle school, mm. it just China started to reform, mm. 1978. Mm. So Deng Xiaoping did the one thing, which changed the whole fate of our generation, is to resume the actual university entry. Mm. To resume the university entry examination. Right. To resume the highest uh, education, mm -hmm. which is interrupted by Culture Revolution. And then I, I have the chance to went to Tsinghua University mm. to get the best education. Yes. And then I, China opened the door. I have the chance to go to Imperial yes. to study. And then I become scientist. And then I have the chance to contribute back to my country, back to Hong Kong. Mm. So this is exactly because of this man. I went to US when I was 16, and I have to pay for my own college expense. Back in those days, my dad had only tiny little business, and uh, I said, well, just drop me off. And I, my dad I literally said, good luck. And uh, to put myself through college, I have to work 40 hours a week because I'm only $1.80 per hour. I, ca I, can I cannot afford to go to the big name school like U UCLA, USC, which I, my GPA was 3.6, was good, was qualified to go in, but I don't have enough money. So I give up on that and go to a community college. I have to pay like $900, $900 a year. Mm -hmm. So I can only afford uh, to go there and work 40 hours a week and I did that for four, uh, three years, full time working. I do have the poems I want to share with us. We have the poem which is uh, I like very much. It's uh, originally coming from the Buddhist temple in Chengdu. It shows that the Kan la jiu zuo, zuo la bian fang, fang la bian liao, liao liao you he bu liao. Hui sheng yu jue, jue sheng yu si. 思生于自在,生生还是无生, which give, uh, give me lots of the inspiring, lots of the thoughts in the practice, in the daily lives. 
you can see we need to have a very quick decision. Just do it. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlight. We ask our guests to bring along an item that is especially dear to them with significant meaning that personifies their lion rock spirits and has helped to shape who they are today. I had very severe back pain at the time and it was so bad that I could, within 15 minutes after sitting on a chair, had to lie down because it was so painful. I had a very good friend who was one of the medical practitioners who treated me. And he said, well, John, I, I think we have tried everything and I couldn't help you. How about you try Qigong? I said, well, is it real? And he said, well, I practice Qigong. Mm. And he's, a, he's a medical practitioner. Luckily, I learned from one who was a great tutor in China. And this uh, Chinese tutor taught me the first motion-led Qigong. I practice, I spend a lot of time, I invest uh, my time on my health. Um, let me show you this. Mm. This is what we call, uh, in Chinese we call ga fen. Mm. Ga fen, it means, uh, if I translate it, it's like family discipline. Yeah. Um, it reflects the kind of family values that we should all live up to. Mm. This is very important. My dad wrote it back in 1985. It says 1985, January. Mm. So um, it's been here for a long time and this is where we look up to when we are going through different, especially difficult time. Mm -hmm. What kind of values that we want to live up to? What kind of values that we want to leave to our children? Yes. How do we manage our family, our household? Mm -hmm. It's all in here. I came from a very traditional fa uh, Chinese family. My father and my mother were separated at the time. My mom was in, in Guangzhou mm -hmm. and my father had to work all the time. And I was raised by my grandmother. In our Chinese tradition, uh, we were not very affectionate, but I wanted to adapt that uh, the modern way of communications, right? Mm -hmm. By showing more affections. Let's, I hug my kids. Uh, I still hug my kids many times a day. And, and I try to be as open-minded as possible and let them pursue their dreams and, and support whatever they want to do, whatever that makes them happy. Everyone has some tough times during their career and mm -hmm. during their life. Uh, but I must say that in the past few years, uh, I and maybe many people in Hong Kong has gone through a very tough time in the past few years mm -hmm. uh, from the nine, uh, 2019, uh, the riots and also the pandemic in the past few years. But I, I think uh, one thing that keep me to move on and to try, continues to try my best is uh, when you are in that position at that time, you just have to do it. Because I think it's the, um, the you are chosen in some way to be in that position at that time, then you have to do it. it it's for you to tackle the problems, to try your best, to try to help Hong Kong to solve the problem. I would like to share um an iambic verse or, or song qi, uh, which my mother has written for me. Uh, she composed this as, um, as a piece of calligraphy. And this is the uh, iambic verse of uh, a Song dynasty um, poet called Sun Heizat in 1988, I still remember. Um, she asked me to pick a verse that I, I like and so I picked what I thought was my favorite verse at the time, and I thought of this uh, verse, which I have learned since I was a child. I, I love this piece very much um, because it uh, reminds me of a, a, a moment between my mother and I where we communicated in art and literature. This is the first thing I got in the laboratories uh, given by my uh, supervisor. I was doing um, nanotechnology studies and researches and we basically we tend to deal with the very small objects and with these tweezers we used to clip 
and take samples and keep transferring it in the size of 0.5 millimeter times 0.5 millimeters. And on top, we would have over 200 devices in, in micron scale. We cannot see that under the microscope. Under the optic microscope, we cannot see that. And on top of that, we make uh, nanoscale devices through different techniques, and which is uh, what we do on the substrate. And that's what's the important of our research is. So my first job in the rice company is in the warehouse. And my father gave me these. Huh. This is the rice hook, which my grandfather gave it to my father. Oh, that's very meaningful. So this is to show, this is actually a hook onto the uh, gunny bag. So if you pull it too hard, you will slash the bag. Of course, if you don't have enough force, you can't do it. So even the people in the management sitting in the office don't know how to handle this. So this is actually uh, a lesson to me, mm. saying that each and every level of our uh, colleagues has a unique skill and which the other people can't replace. Mm. So we have to appreciate each and every uh, person in the company. This actually reflects to what the rice business is. What I have with me today is this little uh, called tooting toy. Uh, it's a toy given to me by a friend. And, and since then, it has been sitting on my working desk. The reason why I like it very much is I allow me to do a little bit. Maybe you can see this. What, 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 the way it works is no matter what you do with the toy, it will still stand back up. And, and the message, I really like it, is because this truly symbolizes the Hong Kong spirit, uh, particularly to the young generation. And this particular toy, I like it very much, is because it's the message I want to give, whether it's your personal life or your career. Everybody will bump into problems, okay? And yet, when you face, are being faced with an issue or a problem, doesn't mean you give up. There's an um, aircraft model. Um, it gives me a lot of memories mm. about my life. Okay, may I? My first job was in um, aviation. And then all along, I um, played with my career with aviation for 42 years before I got a chance to join the um, public service. Mm. And during my time in aviation, I was very lucky. I found my wife. Whoa. Well, when I was working in um, Jardin Aviation, mm. um, suddenly on one day, I found a very pretty girl joining the company. And she was only 18 years old. But I was rather lucky. I don't know why she picked me up. <laughs> um, maybe um, I look stupid. Um, I, I, I wasn't that handsome comparing to the others. But, um, Far too humble. Well, I mean, uh, the chemistry work. Now, let's look back at some rapid fire segments with impromptu responses from our guests. What's your favorite food? Potato chips. Instant noodle. Dim sum. Eating white rice with soy sauce and lard. Classic Cantonese food. Even satay with instant noodle, noodles. Huh? Gotta have a cheeseburger. Hot dog. Fish and chips. Chinese noodle in soup. Double boiled Chinese soup. Char siu rice. Tai pai dong. Blueberry cheese cheesecake. My mom's soup. Apple pie from Saigon. Where would you bring new visitors to Hong Kong? Ocean Park. West Kowloon Cultural District. West Kowloon Cultural District. Kowloon Western District. The peak is beautiful. The peak. Oh, I normally take them to Lama Island. Saigon has to be in class. Science Park. Science Park. Mong Kok. Our 360 cable car. Any hidden talent that you have that people don't know of? I can write poem. Singing. Singing? I can sew and I can do embroidery. I can play classical piano. <laughs> making lousy jokes. Drawing. To making complex things simple. I'm pretty awesome at Monopoly. But my wife says I make good breakfasts. Not being able to reduce weight. What's your proudest moment? Of course, when I got married and uh, my daughter was first born. I haven't been appointed uh, first DPP of Hong Kong after the handover. The moment I know, I knew I got admitted to the university. My graduation at the university. Uh, when I was admitted by the Tsinghua University. My youngest daughter being admitted into the university. My son graduated from the University okay. of Toronto. Birth of my children. When somebody say, I love you. I did manage to uh, go down to 120 pounds. The advice would you give to your younger self? Made more friends. Check in. 
and take on the challenges and hardships in life. Uh, don't be nervous. Definitely never give up. You have to live your dream. Take care of your health. Take good care of your health. Work harder, take more risks. Go east, go east, young man. Don't make the same mistake again. Work harder, play harder. Be more aggressive, be more humble. Just stick to your instinct and go for it. To work hard and be creative. What are the qualities you most admire about your parents? How to be very disciplined. Hardworking, endurant, and they tolerate my shortcomings. Very hardworking. They are kind, considerate. A high standards of excellence. They were very committed to me. They wanted to inspire me. Their generosity and their ability to have been so supportive of me. Resilience. The traditional Chinese values. Hardworking. Never give up. How will Hong Kong look in five years? Hong Kong is heading towards a much better, a brighter future. It will look better than ever. Definitely it will be much better. Hong Kong will become a center of excellence in medical innovation. It will be a happier place than today. Highly competitive, glorious. It will be the best international multipolar city. Hong Kong will be full of energy, be full of vibrance, be full of opportunities, and I think also be well recognized as a very model international city. Thank you for growing with us and supporting us. Please share with us your ideas and suggestions for Season 3. On behalf of all of us at Friday Beyond Spotlights, you have our deepest gratitude and we wish you good health and wish you the best things in life. Until we meet again, goodbye.